So the government of India has given, especially for startups, expedited examinations. In that case, in normally it will take four years for the people to grant patent. But the government of India has provided this scheme, especially for startups, within one year you can grant patent. So patent will be available within one year. This is what the wonderful thing. Even uh, US doesn't have this policy. We have this policy. And uh, don't go for only pattern, think of other things or other industry also, whether copyright or trademark or design also. So this also will fetch money. There's no point in simply converting the idea into prototype or some good pattern. Then uh, ask the student not to violate others' intellectual property. This is the serious issues now, and uh, this is also the main part. And if, if there is a chance for international uh, market for the student's product or startup product, ask them to go for international filing. And one challenge is there, yes, if you are also a member of that part of the project or a startup, whether you can be also part of startup, that is the challenge now also opening to the world. Any questions on IP also? Not IP, sir, it's a general question. Good evening, Tomanda. I'm Dr. Selvaraja from Dirajilam uh, Gandhi College of Technology. Uh, sir, as per my observation, sir, really many students are very interested to come for the startup program. Uh, but the practical issue is, they are asking ideas from staff itself. That's a very lack of ideas. But uh, as per our faculty concern, we are giving a few, to be few staff only giving uh, ideas. Out of that few ideas also, many of the ideas are not viable. This is one answer. Another end, I am uh, working as a consultant for our Indian Army on the prestigious project modernization of Indian Army based workshop at six uh, various locations in the government of India. <coughs> I have seen many, many challenges and problems in overhauling of uh, our weapon vehicles, uh, all our uh, army equipments, even utilization uh, of uh, spares, manufacturing challenges and uh, materials, even material handling and stores. Everywhere they are facing a lot of challenges. This is another thing. So one side, our students are uh, expected many problems, practical problems and practical uh, challenges. In another side, a lot of problems we are facing. So as a ACT sort of uh, uh, committee, I am requesting you sir as a government agency uh, that the problems are also posted as a open challenge like our Indian uh, Railway Ministry of Railway is posted as six problems now. That will be very helpful for our students. This is my request. Thank you. I am uh, not sure what was the question in the first part, but I'm still sort of making. Some ideas are not big. Sure. So, so I, I think one uh, you know one way to uh, manage the situation would be to make it uh, attached to an incentive for the staff as well. Okay. If, if you can attach an incentive to the staff saying if you can get more uh, validated problem statements from the industry, from uh, you know research, from other uh, you know organizations, then you can at least ensure that faculty also you know graduate in their capabilities. And as uh, Sir was mentioning, I mean, learning is a lifelong pursuit, right? They, they don't stagnate at any point of time. Right? Some of the best uh, you know learning we've had and we've seen is, is, is case studies based learning. So if a, if a staff member can get hold of problem statements and they can solve it with students, that can become an excellent uh, you know prototype and a case study for them to use for future batches uh, of students for learning. Right? So I, I think it's about how we model this. And, and secondly, uh, you said uh, some of these ideas may not be viable. And, and which is where I want to connect to the example that uh, Sanjay, uh, you know, mentioned uh, in, in the in the, uh, in the Kerala College when he said the uh, the startup was a commercial failure, but was a technical success. So his point was that the prototype was worth doing. No complaints about it, right? Clearly, the student or the or the students that were involved in doing that learned something about computer programming and, and software systems that they would not have if they had just gone through the academic. Uh, system. So that was very clear. But it was a commercial failure for obvious reasons, right? So I think it's also important for us to set the bar, uh, you know, lower and, and maybe a little more relevant. I'm, I'm not saying just take up any problem statement and just start going after it. Uh, 
I mean, they have to be looked at also from a from a technical standpoint of is it worth solving? Is it worth the pursuit? Will something beneficial come out of it? Will the learning be you know wholesome and things like that? But I think we have to keep the technical part and the commercial part separately and not confuse it because at, at, at an early stage, it it just you know disappoints and discourages more number of people from doing it. Right. So maybe we'll have to be a little sort of watchful in how we manage that. Yeah. That's the first part. Thank you. So I could relate to uh, what you are saying as a problem, what the students look forward in the teachers, their faculty. See, there's been a lot of pressure for the faculty in terms of a lot of other, already a lot of academic uh, things they need to do, they need to uh, perform. In spite of that, as Madam was also hinting, a college might have maybe 10% or a 5% who are entrepreneurial, faculty who are entrepreneurial or who could relate to entrepreneurship. And putting a lot of pressure on them for ideas, whether it can be technical or it can be a business oriented, it cannot be a practical solution. What I, I can think of is right now is that I'm uh, been a little bit uh, involved with EDI where I could see more than they train 6,000 to 7,000 entrepreneurs in a year through various programs. And the colleges uh, in and around uh, those uh, entrepreneurs, what businesses they are running, have a great opportunity to collaborate with them, to learn from them, to let them, to go and let the students to go and see them first or talk to them. Because when we are not keeping well, as a passion, we go to a doctor. When you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to go to an entrepreneur. Then only you can relate to what they are doing, what you can understand from that. So giving an opportunity, how we once formed a placement cell or a displacement cell many years back, now it is the right time to form an industry interaction cell which will help the students to go and meet the entrepreneurs in their local, then within Tamil Nadu and then beyond boundaries. That is the only way they can understand and relate the practical problems and the practical opportunities on what they are doing, how they are doing. And for that, I would say CED or EDI can all be a great bridge in helping the students and uphold the faculties to be in terms of the reality and helping them to grow in entrepreneurship. See, to add on to Mr. Saravanan, the center where I belong to, normally we work with industry on conducting that uh, hackathons or webathon or whatever the, uh, the year you call it. Encourage the students to participate at least. At least if they, they don't participate, let them come and see and witness. Right? So that gives a kind of an impetus. In fact, uh, last year we conducted a, a Titan hackathon. There were 960 teams across the state of Tamil Nadu, a few teams from other states. And uh, the, the films are conducted across the uh, state. So in that reason, if anybody is really interested with, with this kind of an input, so you can you can send them, let them go, come and witness, right, when people are presenting and things like that. So if we encourage that kind of a, a system, then probably students will get an idea and then they can participate. Yeah, the, uh, to me, I mean, there is different something. The Indian youth uh, come out, and each one of us come out with ideas like platforms. Let's see what uh, Suma wants to say on that. Uh, uh, that she believes in the idea making abilities of the students and as what Sanjay said, the fear of failure stops them from bringing the ideas out. Let's see what she wants to uh, Thank you, Anandha sir. Um, I've been observing all your faces for the last uh, 25 minutes and uh, I see a lot of different expressions. One, some of you are smiling, uh, understanding with what you're saying, some of you are probably looking at your watch, some of you are sleeping here and uh, some of you are confused, right? Uh, this is the same expression that you would get from a student crowd as well because uh, when you try to see them as a market opportunity, right now we all are, right? Because we know our country is not doing well, we need jobs, we need jobs to be created locally and hence we are pushing that startup uh, force into the minds of students, right? Uh, so we see them as an opportunity. It is not wrong, but please understand, um, it's an amalgamation of things, right? Like in a student, in a class of say 70 students, you're gonna have different types of students. There's not a good student and a bad student, right? So some of them are academically successful and some of them probably want to go into deep research. It's, it's okay. But where is startup is for those who are ambitious. Like Sanjay has said, many of others, I mean on the diocese have said, it's for ambitious students, right? Um, our society forever has never encouraged someone who's come out and said, I have an idea. Ever. 
start at school, start at home. If anyone is going to just come out and say, I have an idea, the first thing we say is shut up. Right? We do that. So that stops ideas. So to be answer the question that it's it's not it's it's very difficult to say, I have an idea, let me go with it. It's not it's not an easy thing because we kind of just stop the thought, right? So that's a problem in itself. And we are trying to address solutions or give solutions somewhere in the middle of all the chaos. And it's going to be very difficult for all of us. Right? And um, the policy is bringing clarity, but it is now in the implementation. Implementation is going to be a challenge. I'm not going to deny that. But having said that, there are best practices that are available and we need to adopt them and probably better that. I mean, we should not recreate something of our own because we'll be wasting our time. I just uh, stop with a small story. Uh, when I was prior to this, I was with IIT Madras and we had a workshop. And this workshop was for students to understand what startup is all about. And there was this old gentleman in the workshop. He was probably around 60 years old. And right after the workshop, he came up to me and said, Ma'am, I really want my son to go into startup because that's something he wanted to begin with. But I forced him into a PhD. So if you see, that's the reality here, right? So he's saying, my son is unhappy now. He's finished his PhD, but he's unhappy. I want him to get into the startup scene because that's what he wanted to do. So I think what we need to first go back with is what do the students want to do? And if it's startup, let's just give them an environment that will help them with it. And I think the policy is a wonderful place to start with. That's it. So, so the question is absolutely valid. It's true, right? Um, so from my practitioner viewpoint at Startup Village, I'll tell you how we are addressing it. Uh, one, where do business ideas come from? Right? In my experience, it comes only in two ways. The first way is you work in the industry for like eight to ten years, and because now you have industry exposure, you see a problem in the industry, and that problem suddenly becomes your business idea. So it comes with industry experience. Right? That's how people in the industry start companies. The second way ideas come is you take creative leaps. In the world of smartphones, here is the new iPhone. So you've taken a massive creative leap. So if you look at iPhone, right? Steve Jobs didn't invent the glass. He didn't invent the circuits. He didn't invent anything new into it. He put all the new things which other people had created into a completely new product. But it was miles ahead of what everybody else had. This creatively, kids are not able to do. So our thinking was why? If you look at our education pattern in school and mostly in college, most of the questions are of a single type. 5 plus 5 equals question mark. There's only one correct answer, 10. So our education system from school is on converging thinking. We are not asking them question mark plus question mark equals 10 because there are no infinite answers. There is no answer key to evaluate. So because of this, so industry exposure students don't have, so the industry portion is gone. The creative thing didn't happen because we never taught them to, so all of the kids are creative, right? and all of us are creative. The fact is we never encourage them. So all of a sudden if you ask kids to come up with the ideas, they don't come. That is the source of your statement, kids don't have ideas. I just want you to help understand the background of this, right? So now how do we tackle this? One, we have to fix school, so that's a larger agenda we have at AICT. But currently what we're doing at Startup Village is, we have industry people doing full-time research, okay. whose only job is to do research. So if you've seen companies like Gartner, or new companies like Traction, they employ people called analysts. And the job of the analyst is to only search out new ideas for businesses. Now the thing is, it's not about the idea, it's all about execution, right? So these ideas, we filter down into ideas which can be enabled by engineering students. And those